ho, 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 ho. Oh, no, wait, wait. Hold on here a second. There, there we go. So, greetings, folks. Well, here we are again. Same shirt, same hat, same books behind me. One more week until winter break. You've got a test on Wednesday. This video is going to give you some kind of idea as to maybe some of the scenarios you might run into on the test, along with some of the questions, maybe. Ho, ho, ho! We'll see how it goes. Alrighty. Well, what you're about to see is the question that is going to be the major question on your test on Wednesday. Um, so sit tight. First possibility is an Atwood machine. Mass, mass, massive pulley. Finger holding the pulley in place. Draw a free body diagram. Determine how large the force the finger has to apply to keep the system in static equilibrium. It's a rigid body problem. Remove the finger and let the system accelerate. Determine the acceleration of either M1 or M2. Knowing the acceleration of M1 or M2, determine the angular acceleration of the pulley. Let M2 drop some distance with M1 rising an equal amount. Determine what the velocity of M2 is after the drop. Knowing what M2's velocity is after the drop, determine the pulley's angular velocity at that point. Determine the pulley's angular momentum at that point. And for a picked point on the pulley, determine its moment of inertia, given that you know what the moment of inertia is about the axis of rotation. So putting all that information on one page, here we have the system, here's the finger, uh, draw a free body diagram for all the forces acting on M1, M2, and the pulley. Um, determine what the finger force has to be if you want static equilibrium. So that's going to be a basically a, a rigid body problem. You're going to pretty much sum up the torques about the, the central axis here on the pulley. Um, remove the finger and let the system accelerate. Um, you're going to have to use Newton's second law, both rotation and translational versions, to determine what that acceleration is going to be. Um, once you know what the acceleration is, you can figure out the angular acceleration with A equals R alpha. That's almost like a mini problem. Um, the body drops some distance. M2 drops some distance. M1 goes up some distance. Um, figuring out what the velocity is after the drop is a conservation of energy problem. Knowing that velocity, you can figure out the angular velocity of the pulley with V equals R omega. That's another little mini problem. Angular momentum is L equals I omega, which is what you got omega from part F. Um, and anything where you have to figure out a moment of inertia about an axis other than through the center of mass is a parallel axis theorem problem. Here's a second possible scenario. You've got a tension. Uh, a, a pinned uh, beam with a mass at the end. This is effectively your lab. Remove the tension, figure out the acceleration of the lump, figure out the angular acceleration of the beam, figure out how fast the lump is going after it's rotated down some distance, figure out the angular velocity of the beam at that point, the angular momentum of the beam at that point, the moment of inertia of the beam about some axis other than its center of mass, you're done. New scenario, ball with a string wrapped around it. Remove the tension due to the, the, the string. The ball rolls down the incline. Figure out its acceleration. Figure out its angular acceleration, etc. These are essentially the problems that you had on the quizzes. You have a block sitting on an incline. There's a string attached to it. goes up over a massive pulley. It's attached to a hanging mass. A finger applies force to the block, keeping it in equilibrium. Remove the finger. What's the system's acceleration? What's the angular acceleration of the pulley? What's the magnitude of the velocity after the block had moved down some distance? What's the angular velocity of the pulley at that point? What's the angular momentum of the pulley at that point? 
What's the moment of inertia about, about some axis other than through the center of mass of the pulley? Same problem you just looked at, except now the block is sitting on a flat table instead of an incline. Same questions as before. This is a problem that's similar to the pro a problem that you actually saw a video on back a ways. Uh, pulley, arm, uh, lump sitting uh, attached to it. Finger is holding the system in equilibrium. Remove the finger. Body starts to angularly accelerate. Here are the questions. This is a twist on an Atwood machine. Here you have a pulley and there's a hub attached to it. One of the masses has a string wrapped around the hub. A second string is wrapped around the pulley with a mass attached to it. There's a line attached to the hub that's applying a force that's keeping everything in equilibrium. You remove the line that's producing the equilibrium. What's the system, system's acceleration, etc. Here we have a pinned beam. What's different about this is that the pin is not at the end. It's some distance up, and you would be given what that distance was. Tension is removed. Body starts to angularly accelerate about the pin. System's acceleration, angular acceleration, etc. This is a different configuration for a pinned beam. Uh, lump is in a different place. Tension is in a different place. Orientation is different. Tensions removed, system starts to angularly accelerate, etc. And lastly, we actually had a video on this. Um, you've got a ball with a string wrapped around it. The string up, so it goes up over a massive pulley and down is attached to a hanging mass. Um, in this particular problem, I didn't put a, a finger in to hold it in equilibrium. Um, I just wanted a free body diagram and then start off with figuring out the system's acceleration, probably the acceleration of the ball's center of mass, angular acceleration of the ball, etc. So this is hardly what you would call a holiday gift, but in an odd sort of a way it is. Um, I'm pretty much showing you the possible problems that I have to choose from for your, your major test problem. Um, what's more, if you go to the class PDFs, uh, you will find these problems and you will find the solutions to these problems. So if you can find the time to look through all of this stuff, um, assuming that you generally know what you're doing, you ought to find this test actually pretty easy, hopefully. Anyway, that's it.